Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to be looking at corporate charitable contribution. This topic is covered in an income tax course, specifically in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create a LinkedIn account. It's very important for your professional growth and networking. I'm very active on LinkedIn, so please connect with me. If you're a Facebook user, you can like my Facebook page and connect with me on a personal level. YouTube is where you want to do, is to subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel, like the videos if you like them, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. I do have also a Twitter account and a website. On my website, I always have some sort of a deal for my students. Um, right now i'm running a deal with becker cpa review so you can save a thousand dollar this deal is limited so if you're listening to this recording if you're either a cpa candidate or an accounting student becker is the gold standard in cpa preparation make sure you take advantage of this offer you will benefit yourself and benefit this channel so we are going through some key differences between an income tax of individuals and corporations and here's some differences accounting period accounting method capital gains, capital losses, recapture of depreciation, business interest limitation, charitable contribution. So I already covered all of those and now we're gonna be covering charitable contribution. I'm gonna be covering executive compensation next, net operating loss, as well as a special deduction only available to corporation. So let's talk about charitable contribution. What's the big idea? Yeah, nothing much. The big idea is just like on individual level, the government, the Congress wants corporation to contribute to charities because that's a public good. So what would they do? They will try to they will try to encourage you by giving you a deduction. Okay, so that's that's a big idea. Now, for gap, you can deduct you're going to see later that for IRS purposes you are limited of how much you can deduct. When it comes to gap, when you prepare your financial statements, you can deduct 100% of the contribution. Why am I mentioning this? Because eventually at some point we have to reconcile gap and the IRS, so I'm just planting the seed. Now what can you contribute? Well, you can contribute cash, you can contribute property, or you can contribute ordinary income properties. You could contribute three different things. Cash contribution, well, very, very easy. You will deduct the cash contribution in the year paid. Now, for every one of these type of contribution, whether it's cash, property, or ordinary income, there's an exception. So generally speaking, for cash, you have to deduct it in the year you paid it, unless unless the contribution was authorized, in other words, you cannot back out, by the board of directors by the end of the year, and it is paid before you file your income tax return. So as long as the board authorized it, and you're gonna make the payment before April 15, so if we're, we're looking at 2018 here, 2019. So as long as the board authorized it by the end of the year and the payment is made by 415 of the following year, which is 415 is when you complete your income tax return, you can deduct it in 2018. So you don't have to pay it in 2018, but if you don't pay it, make sure the board authorized it and you are paying it before April 15th. Now, property contribution. Property contribution is when you contribute an asset. Well, we could have long-term capital gain property contribution. What is long-term property? Long-term capital gain property? It means if you sold this asset, it would generate long-term capital gain. Now, when would an asset generate long-term capital gain? Is when you hold it for more than a year, a year or more. So if you are contributing a long-term capital asset, how much can you contribute? You can contribute the greater of the fair market value or adjusted basis. So the deduction is Usually, we're going to assume it's the fair market value is higher, the fair market value. Now, there are some exceptions to this rule. We'll look at them later. But first, I'm giving you the general rule. For any long-term capital gain property, you can, you can deduct the fair market value. What happened if you contributed ordinary income property? Ordinary income property is all other assets that's not classified as long-term property. Simply put, if you have an asset that you held for less than a year or if you're contributing inventory, generally speaking. Now, the deduction here is the lesser of fair market value or adjusted basis. So how much can you deduct? Look at your fair market value. Look at your adjusted basis. Choose the lower of these two. Again, there's an exception for that. But first, we look at the general rules. Then we look at the exceptions. Let's look at the general rule and let's start with this simple example. On December 28, Peach, a calendar year company, accrual basis taxpayer. So this is a partnership, 
not a corporation partnership, authorize a donation of $5,000 to the Atlanta Symphony Association, which is a qualified charitable contribution. The donation is made April 11, 2019. Now, a partnership cannot do this. Only corporation can accrue it, basically. If each company is a corpor corporation and the December 28th authorized was made by its board of directors, Peach can claim the 5,000 in 2018. If it's a partnership, you can do so. Now, why not? We'll see later on when we talk about the partnership, okay? But for a corporation, corporation, you can basically accrue that contribution as long as the board authorized it and you are going to pay it. Let's take a look at another example. H Corporation owns inventory with a basis of 10,000. It means ordinary income property and a fair value of eight. So the, this is the adjusted basis and this is the fair market value. A charitable contribution on inventory result in a deductible amount of 8,000 because if it's an ordinary income property, which is inventory, you have to choose between the lower of 8,000 and 10,000. So the lower is eight. So what should the company do? If you are an H corporation shoes, what should I do? I would sell the inventory. I would sell it for eight. So eight minus 10 equal to a loss of two. I will deduct this loss on my income tax return, then take the $8,000 cash, then send it to the charity. This way, you have 10,000 of deduction, 2,000 of the losses, 8,000 for the charity. Let's take a look at a third example. During the current year, M Corporation donate a parcel of land, a capital asset to Oakland Community College. M Corporation acquired the land five years ago for 60,000. We are dealing here with long-term property and a fair market value of 100,000. So, because it's a long-term property, you are allowed to choose, but the fair market value can be used, 100,000. The point is this, the government want to encourage you to donate. If it's a long-term capital gain property, they allow you to use the 100,000, the 100,000. Now, assuming that you are not limited, you are not limited, there's any limitation. Okay. Now, remember, for the long-term capital gain, we have two exceptions. Okay. Remember, generally speaking, you could, the, you could use the fair market value unless we're going to look at two exceptions. Unless corporation can only deduct basis of tangible personal property is contributed and not used to a charity by its exempt function. Let's go back to this example. In this example, we contribute the land to the community college. The assumption here is the community college is going to use the land to build the campus, which is what? Which is, it's gonna put the land for its related use, which is educating people, building a campus, or building a dormitory, or building a research lab, whatever that is, it's for the purpose of the community college. Now, if that land contributed to the community college is not used by the community college, basically there is no use for it, then under those circumstances, you cannot take the fair market value. Also, deduction for property contribution to certain private non-operating foundation. What is private non-operating foundation? It's a foundation that grants money to other charitable contributions. So their purpose is not to help people directly, it's to help other other charities, then the charities would help the people. So if you contribute the money to a private non-operating foundation. Usually they have a name of famous people. So you contribute money to them, then those private non-operating non foundation, non-operating means they don't work in helping people directly, they help them indirectly. Under those circumstances, you have to use the basis if you're, if you're contributing money to those circumstances. Let's take a look at an example. White Corporation donate a painting worth 200,000 to Western State Art Museum, which is a qualified organization. And that organization exhibited the painting in the museum. White acquired the painting for 90,000 uh, for 90,000 in year 2000 because the museum put the painting to a related use. Guess what? We could take the full amount, full fair market value. Now assume the same fact except that White Corporation donate the painting to the American Soci Cancer Society. Well, if they donate the painting to American Cancer Society, guess what? Then the American Cancer Society, they're not going to need the painting for exhibit purposes. They're going to sell the painting because they need the money. Under those circumstances, what's happening is you are contributing to an organization for which the painting is not put for a related use. Therefore, you are limited to the basis. Therefore, under those circumstances, white corporation can only deduct 90000 
ordinary income property remember ordinary income property we have to use the lower of the basis or fair market value whichever is lower also we have an exception here what's the exception the exception is this if you contribute money to certain charitable contribution or assets not money uh, whose whose purpose include the care of the ill the needy or the infant if that's the case you can use something other than the basis or if you make a contribution of a tangible research property constructed by you to a qualified education or scientific organization that use the property for that purpose, which is research or experimentation or research training, under those circumstances, here's what you can do. You can take the basis and add to the basis 50% of the appreciation. Okay? However, your deduction is limited to twice of the corporate uh, of the uh, property basis. And we'll look at an example. L Corporation a Clothing Retailer Donate Children Clothing to the Salvation Army to be used to clothe homeless children. So here we are dealing with infant. The basis in the property is 2000 and the fair market value is 3 So since it's for the infant, what you can do, you can take 2000 plus 50% of the appreciation. The appreciation is 1000 50% of that is 500 Therefore, you can take a deduction of 2500 Okay, although it's uh, the property is ordinary income property, you can take the basis plus 50% of its appreciation. Okay, if instead the fair market value was seven, then guess what? You don't take 2000 plus 3500, which is 50% of 7000. What you can do because that's gonna put you above twice the basis, then what you can do, you can take 2000 times two, then you can deduct. 4,000. So you can deduct double the basis. You know, if the market value was very high, you can deduct double the basis um, under those circumstances. Um, again, Congress is, is always um, uh, very uh, uh, generous, but to a point. Okay, so the, the, there's a limitation on the charitable contribution. And what's the limitation? It's 10% of your taxable income or net income. And what is taxable income or net income? It's revenues minus expenses. Now, when you compute revenues minus expenses, you cannot take into account the charitable contribution. So you cannot include the charitable contribution in your expenses. Duh, but I have to tell you this. NOL carryback, you cannot include NOL carryback. Net operating loss carryback. We'll see what this is in the, in the following lecture, but you cannot include this. You cannot include capital loss carryback, which we saw this. We cannot include capital loss carryback. And you cannot use dividend received deduction, with, which we did not use yet, with, with, which we did not cover yet, which we'll see what they are. So when you compute taxable income, those you cannot, you, you cannot utilize them. You cannot utilize those deductions. Unused charitable contribution, if you have any amount unused, guess what? You can carry it for five years. Let's take a look at an example. During 2018, Orange Corporation, which is a calendar year taxpayer, has the follow, had the following income and expenses. Income from operation, expenses from operation, dividend received deduction, and charitable contribution. So they're asking us, you know, if we want to compute how much contribution we made six thousand how much can we deduct of the six thousand well here's what's going to happen we're going to have to take the one hundred and forty thousand plus the ten thousand of dividend this is our total income we include everything together then we deduct our operating expenses what we're left with is forty thousand this is our taxable income well guess what we can take an additional deduction of ten percent of ten thousand which is we can make the contrib we can we made the contribution of six, but we can only deduct four. Okay, so we can only deduct four, and what's left is two thousand dollar, because we deducted four. We can deduct four. We are allowed to deduct four. What's left is two thousand. Now, for gap purposes, now remember, for gap purposes, you're going to take the full six thousand. Okay, and what's going to happen with this two thousand? It's going to be carried for 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and 2023 until the contribution amount is exhausted. Assuming the same fact, but they have a taxable income of 50,000. Now, in 2019, the following year, so this is 2019, you have a taxable income of 50,000. Well, guess what? I'm gonna take taxable income times 10%, and that's gonna give me $5,000. In other words, I can contribute, make a charitable contribution of $5,000. Um, we made a charitable contribution of 4,500. 
For that year, the company made a charitable contribution of 4,500. Now, remember we can deduct five, okay? What's gonna happen? First, we always use the current year first. So what's gonna happen since we can deduct 5,000 in total, we use the current year, and in the current year, we contributed 4,500. Then from the prior year, from the prior year, we have, uh, we can include 500 because from the prior year, we still have 2,000, we can include 500. So that's up to 5,000. The point is, if you have a carry carryover, you don't use the carry over first. You would use the current year contribution. If you don't have a current year contribution, then you can use the carry the carry over. But you don't have in this situation. You have to use the um, current year first, which is four thousand five hundred. Then you would include the five hundred from the prior year. Then you still have fifteen hundred of carry forward. Okay. If you have any questions, any comments about this topic, please email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. If you're studying in your, you're in, for college right now, technically you are preparing for the exam. Study hard. It's worth it.